What's up, everyone? David Seven Skies here, broadcasting from the Seven Skies Mansion. Today, I want to do something kind of interesting, in my opinion. It's it's weird. It's a weird tutorial, but uh, I still think it's pretty interesting. Um, and I'm talking about. Uh, how to organize your project. So without any further ado, let's open Ableton and let's check this out. Okay, so we're here um, on a project that I've been working on recently. It's a really cool song um, that I can't really show because it's not done yet. And as you can see, the project looks like a mess. Uh, if you if you check out my stuff on Instagram and like my pictures and my project screenshots, they usually all look like super clean and super tidy and everything is organized and the right colors. Um, while if you look at this one, it just looks like a freaking mess. Um, so the reason is uh, that basically when I'm producing and this, this kind of works as a general rule. I mean, everybody, everyone has its own way of working. Um, so some people just like to be organized all the time, even when they're creating. I personally like to just like get as many ideas as possible um, into my song. So just like throw everything, just like open serums and get lows and stuff and just write shit until something just works. Or sometimes I'll just put something in there and maybe I'll take it out later. But yeah, it's, it usually is just like a, looks like a freaking mess as you can see here. So so that way, what happens is you focus on your ideas. So because I, because I strongly think that if you are too concerned about the way that your project looks when you're creating, you have to compromise with your ideas. And I feel like it makes you lose inspiration. So if you're really inspired, usually what you want to do is just make music. Like I said, I usually just like throw everything uh, while I'm producing, while I have the idea, uh, while I have the inspiration flow, nothing else matter. I don't care about colors. I don't care about names. I don't care about anything. Now, uh, this song, it's pretty much done. As you can see, I mean, it's not completely done. Um, because it means it's still missing the outro, but the main idea is pretty much there. And so at this point, sometimes like when I'm almost done and I'm like, all right, what do I do? I don't know what to do. I hit the, um, I call it the wall. So you don't have any more inspiration and you're just like, you know, listening the song again and again and again, nothing comes that like you feel like you're wasting time in the studio because you're just listening to it. And then uh, all sort of, things happen to yourself, you start doubting yourself, stuff like that. So at this point, and only at this point, is where I start organizing the project. So everything is here. Now, let's see how I organize my stuff. One thing that you should always do, it's use familiar colors. For example, you know, I try to associate color to sound as much as possible. My kick is always red just because the color pops um, pops out a lot in the project and so does the kick or so it should in a mix. Um, <clears throat> lead again tends to be a very bright and pop color as well, like pink, uh, just because the lead, again, it's an element that really should stand out in your song. Pads, they're usually very soft. So I'll try to use like a soft color. Yeah, like a, like a very light blue, something like this, but whatever. So let's, look at the project and let's start putting things around, create some groups, uh, rename some stuff and let's see how I organize everything. Here we have the main base and here we have uh, a support base. So what I would normally do is I would group this together and call it base. Then I'll make it orange, right click, assign color, this is an amazing function in Ableton. So it will let you color everything that is either within a track or within a group, and it'll just give it the color um, without you having to manually do it for each and every single track or each and every uh, single region. Uh, again, drums, I tend to use this color. I just like it um, and assign the color to this one as well. Kick, it's already red. The lead, like I said, I'll give it a pop color, like a very strong and fleshy, whoops, um, pink. Now, let's see what we have. I think we have some noises. 
Now, now I'll just look at how do I group stuff, uh, the criteria I have behind grouping stuff, and then uh, how do I color it. So uh, my effects are split in two different types of effects. There are tonal effects and there are noises. Uh, it helps me with the mix later, so I always group them differently. Uh, my noises, because it's called white noise, they're normally white. So as I'm going through the different channels, what I'll do is I'll start coloring them. And now we have this noise. Then let's see. This is a right full, so this is a drum. So I'll take it and I'll move it here. Now we have another effect. It's an effect that I use a lot um, in my songs, which is this one. And this is a tonal effect. So tonal effect would be either like this gray or, yeah, it's normally either gray or black, um, but sometimes it's hard to see. So I'll just give it this gray. Now here we have some fills. I think. Yes. Now fills are normally, for me, at least for the way I organize uh, projects, they're normally uh, not in the drums uh, bus. So, and they're usually brownish. Uh, again, don't ask me why. So I'll give it a brown color. And I know that there are uh, toms and fills. So one is this one. So I'll color it, or sometimes I'll just select all of them. Also, the other thing I do, usually my toms and my snares are together. So now I have a, I know that this one is a snare. And I know that there is a snare somewhere here. There we go. So I'll cover this one as well. And once I found pretty much all of my single elements, I'm gonna uh, hold command and I'm gonna select all of the brown ones. Now, once they're selected, control G and there you go. So I have my fills and snares. So once I created the group, obviously, right click, assign color, and you'll see that all of my regions within the project got the right color. So what I'm gonna do after I created the, the group, I'm gonna mute it, and I'm gonna play the song with this particular channel muted. And if I hear something that is a fill or a snare, I know that I forgot something, and so I'll try and find it, and I'll move it in the group. So for example, I have the drums over here, and now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mute them, and I'm gonna play the drop. And as you can hear, there is um, a ride somewhere, and it's probably this one. Yes, it is. So I know that this ride belongs in the drums. Now, there should be something else going here. I put this one as effects is, but these are actually uh, fills. And I don't want it here. I want it in the fields, which is down here. So I'm going to move it, I'm going to color it. So these are uh, tonal effects, as you can see. So I'm going to change the color to this one, and I'm going to rename this as tonal effects. Once again, I'm going to mute it just to make sure that there are no other tonal effects, but I know that there are, because there's this one. So this one is part of a tonal effect, and I'll drag it here. Now there's the voice thing that I was showing, which is again a tonal effect, and so I'm gonna move it there. 
And now, again, we had this white noise, which would be part of the uh, noise effects. Is. Now we have this one. This one is technically a down full effect, so it should be a tonal. But it also, it also has a lot of noise. Uh, in this case, what I would do is I'll try to understand what is the predominant kind of sound. And I would say this is more noisy than tonal. I mean, it does have a tone that pitches down, but the noise in this, it's very, very loud. So I would make it white. Now we have something else here. This is definitely more noisy. Uh, let's play this one. Even this one, I would say it's more of a white noise effect than anything. Uh, let's play this. This is definitely more tonal. So I'm gonna color it and I'm gonna drag it up here. This is a crash. Crashes sometimes. <sighs> Crashes are weird. Sometimes they put them in the in the drums. Sometimes they put them in the effectses. This one has a delay, so I would probably put it in the effectses. Uh, this one I know for for sure it's a noise. So I would say all of this are gonna be white, and then again. Select them all, group. And this can be effect noise. And again, I'm gonna drag it. Once again, right click. Now we have some claps. So these are definitely drums. Then over here we have a serum and this is an 808. And this is technically not a kick, not the way that I used it. So it's a bass and I'll drag it in the bass section. Last but not least, what we can do is we can select them all, right click again, assign track, assign track color to group track and clips, and boom. Now what we're gonna have is a super organized project in just a few clicks. Now the last thing that I would do is I would try to uh, put the different groups based on their importance. So for example, uh, the tonal effects is down here because they're not particularly important. The kick and the bass are definitely more important. Uh, drums are very important. Lead is super important. So I would just basically stack them based on how important they are within the song. And this is it. I know this is probably a very simple tutorial for a lot of people, but um, but I posted this photo on Instagram once and everybody was like, your project looks so tidy and clean and I feel so bad about uh, about the fact that my project looked terrible and super disorgan unorganized. My project looked very unorganized as well, only until uh, I hit the wall and I don't have any more ideas. At that point, like I said, I would stop, I would color all my uh, different elements, put them into groups and then just move them around, and this is the final result. A perfectly organized and colored uh, project. Okay, this is it for today. Let me know in the comments if you do something like that, if you use color, if you do it um, as you're producing, or if you do it uh, while you're uninspired, or if you don't care at all. Uh, just let me know in the comments. Uh, I'll always like to know how everybody works. And of course, if you liked the video, put a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe, all the classic YouTube stuff. And for me, David, Seven Skies, bye-bye, and I'll see you next time.